Hello friends. In today's class, we are going to talk about an approach to chest pain. So this class will discuss how do we approach a patient who presents to us with the complaint of chest pain. I will cover this class under five different subheadings in three different sessions. In this first session, I'm going to talk about the causes of chest pain and a historical approach to identify this cause. So that means how to take a history of a person who presents with chest pain. In the second session, we will talk about the considerations that are used in evaluating a patient with chest pain, and we will develop a comparative table for different common causes of chest pain. And in the last session in this uh, series, we will develop an algorithmic approach to a patient with chest pain. So let's first try and see what are the causes of chest pain. So this picture represents a cut section of the thoracic cage. If you start here, we will have the skin, then there is the muscle, the bone, then there is a pleural layer, which is the parietal pleura, and then there is the visceral pleura. In between these two is the pleural cavity which exists, and then there is the viscera. Here housed inside is the heart, placed here, and the pericardial sac or the pericardium is insensitive to pain. But any of these structures which are shown in this figure, right from outside to inside, can experience a pathology which can result in pain to the individual. Let's go ahead and talk about the different causes. And here in this slide, I'm just going to enumerate the causes, and then we will look at them in different slides in the further section of this video. There could be myocardial ischemia or injury. These could be due to chronic stable angina or unstable ischemia, which could be unstable angina or myocardial infarction. There could be pericardial or other myocardial diseases, which include pericarditis, a cardiac tamponade, a myocarditis, or a Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. We have acute aortic syndromes, which can be represented by an aortic aneurysm, a dissection, an aortic penetrating ulcer, or an intramural hematoma. We could have different pulmonary causes. Now the pulmonary causes could be pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, pneumonia, malignancy, or a chronic pulmonary hypertension. There could be gastroesophageal causes, which could be gastroesophageal reflux disease, a peptic ulcer disease, a Mallory voice tear, an esophageal rupture, a cholecystitis, biliary colic, or pancreatitis. There could be musculoskeletal and other disorders such as costochondritis, sprain, or herpes zoster. And of course, there can be emotional and psychiatric disorders also. So, you will realize that this is a huge and a very long list of causes, but by no means is this comprehensive. There can be other causes beyond and besides this list also. However, this slide covers the few of the most important causes of chest pain. Out of these, the ones that should be remembered while dealing with any case in emergency would be these cardiac or myocardial ischemia causes, pericarditis, tamponade, aortic dissection, then pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, pneumonia, gastric causes, GERD, peptic ulcer, costochondritis, brain, herpes, and others. So we will take up a few of these causes and discuss them in a little more detail while uh, approaching them from the side of the symptoms 
and not from the side of disease as is common practice in most uh, discussions. So let's go ahead further and try and develop a historical approach to chest pain. There are certain questions which need to be asked while eliciting the history of chest pain. And it's good for you to familiarize yourself with these questions. You want to know about the onset. How did it start? How did it begin? What were you doing at that time? What is the duration? How long has this chest pain been? What are the aggravating features? How does it increase? How does it progress? What happens next? How does it get relieved? What is the location of this pain? What is the character or quality of this pain? Does it radiate anywhere? Are there any associated features? Are there any relieving features? And are there any predisposing features? So these are the 10 quick questions that you need to ask any patient who comes up with history of chest pain. So in an emergency situation, asking these questions and eliciting this history should not take you more than a couple of minutes. You should learn these and these should be on the tips of your fingers. How did it start? How long has it been? How did it get aggravated? Does it get relieved by anything? How did it progress? Where is it occurring? Can you show it to me? What is the character of this pain? What kind of pain is it? Does it radiate anywhere or is it paining there only? What are the associated features? Are you having any ghabrahat? Are you having any sweating? Are you having any palpitations? Are you having any syncope? Are you having any hemoptysis? What are the predisposing features? What's the gender of this individual? What is the age of this individual? And so on and so forth. So eliciting this should be very quick and fast and rapid, like a rapid fire questions in the emergency department as you are eliciting this. Now let's take these up one by one. Let's talk about the onset. So the onset could be insidious, in which the person says, I don't even remember. Or it could be acute, or it could be absolutely sudden. When I was sitting and just now within minutes it started. Then the duration of the chest pain, the duration could be as, as small as five to 10 minutes. It was very sudden and within minutes it got aggravated and it got severe in intensity or it could be something like 10 to 20 minutes or more than 30 minutes. This figure of 30 minutes acquires importance because we, by definition, a myocardial infarction is a pain which is lasting more than 30 minutes. So you need to know whether the pain started in hours, has been there for hours or for days or for months together. What are the aggravating features? So it could be starting with access exercise, I was training for stool when it started. There's a lot of stress in my life and this stress brought it up. I was climbing stairs or it started during sexual intercourse. It started during rest. It started with a trauma. It was associated or it was aggravated when I was lying flat. It was aggravated when I was lying in a lateral decubitus position. So you need to find out how the pain gets aggravated how does it increase? There are certain few characteristics of some kinds of pain that you should remember. Although a characteristic angina is described when it occurs with exercise, strain, stress while climbing stairs or sexual exercise or sexual intercourse. So those are the characteristic aggravating features of the pain of angina pectoris. However, in certain cases, there could be what we call warm-up angina. In warm-up angina, the angina gets relieved even with continued exercise or increased exertion. Even the person continues to exert himself, the pain gets relieved. This is what we know as warm-up angina. And there is also another kind of angina which we identify as postprandial angina. After the person has had meals, that could be a history which is characteristic of a postprandial angina. And this occurs because there is a redistribution of blood flow to the splanchnic circulation after eating 
and this decreases the blood supply to the myocardium, thus resulting in ischemia and chest pain. After asking for ag uh, ag aggravating factors, there are some important locations which are kind of telltale in the diagnosis of chest pain. A patient says, I have retrosternal pain. And this may be because of myocardial pain, esophageal pain, pericarditis, aortic dissection, mediastinal lesions, or pulmonary embolization. So if the pain is retrosternal in this area, then you start thinking of all these. If it is interscapular on the back of the chest, then you could think of myocardial ischemia. It could be musculoskeletal. It could be gallbladder pain. It could be pancreatic pain, or it could even be aortic dissection, which has a tendency to radiate to the back. If the person says it's a right lower anterior chest, now here a lot of abdominal features come into play. <coughs> Excuse me. Here it could be gallbladder, liver, subdiaphragmatic abscesses, pneumonia, pleurisy, gastro or duodenal pain, and some other kind of etiology start figuring in here. When the person says the pain is epigastric, again, there could be a lot of abdominal pathologies which come into play. It could be esophageal, duodenal, pancreatic, gallbladder, liver, or diaphragmatic pleurisy in addition to a pain of myocardial ischemia when it radiates to the shoulder or when, it, when it's left lower anterior chest in this area, then again, it's the abdominal um, organs in this region that we also consider like a splenic infarction, a splenic flexure syndrome, a subdiaphragmatic abscess, could be myositis or pulmonary embolism in this area. Besides, it could be a myocardial injury also. When the pain is in arms, then you start thinking of myocardial ischemia, cervical or dorsal spine pain, and a thoracic outlet syndrome. When it comes to the shoulder, you start thinking again of a myocardial ischemic pain, a pericarditis, subdiaphragmatic abscess, diaphragmatic pleurisy, because most of the diaphragmatic pains will radiate to the shoulder of the individual. This could be the right or the left shoulder, depending on which side of the diaphragm is involved. But as you can see, myocardial ischemia practically figures in most of the regions, and it can be seen in any of the regions. And so location of the pain really does not help us in discriminating myocardial pain from the other kinds of pain. However, if the pain is on the left side in the precordial area or in the retrosternal area, starts radiating to the shoulder, neck, or the jaw of the individual, then you start thinking of a pericardial or a myocardial pain in these individuals. Usually, the myocardial pain will not go beyond the mandible. So if it is radiating to the face, it will no, not go above the mandible of the individual. So much so for location. The next question you ask the individual is what is the character of this pain? Sometimes they may describe as heaviness, constricting pain, squeezing pain. Aisa lagta hai kisi ne meri chhati pe patta band rakha ho ya kisi ne bahut bhari patthar rak diya ho. So these kind of pain are typical and characteristic of angina. There could be burning pain, stabbing or pricking pain, which do point out to other kinds of etiologies. If it's a burning pain, you start thinking of an esophagitis. If it's a stabbing pain or a pricking pain, you start thinking of a plural etiology. If it's a stabbing, deep, sharp pain, then you start thinking of an aortic dissection. So depending upon the character of pain, a lot can be decided about the origin of this pain. Where does it radiate? Does it stay where it started or does it go somewhere? It goes to the jaw, it goes to my left arm, it goes to the right arm, it goes to my shoulder, it goes to back in the interscapular region. So again, these are characteristic of an anginal pain. A pain which is going to the back between the two shoulder blades is said to be classical of an aortic dissection. 
pain radiating to the back could also be seen in pancreatitis. Interscapular pain is, again, it all depends where the lesion is, and then there could be radiation. Also important to remember that shoulder radiation could be seen in any pathology, which is uh, which has got an inflamed diaphragm, and then due to the phrenic nerve, it can come to the shoulder and uh, the pain radiates to the shoulder. The next question to ask the individual while eliciting the history would be the association of this pain. So is it associated with sweating, with ghabrahat or anxiety, with palpitations? Is there dyspnea, breathlessness? Is there shock? Is there a sense of impending doom? So this feeling, the sense of impending doom, has been characteristically described by patients who are having a myocardial infarction. And they often relate to this feeling that it seems that everything is going to come to an end. It's almost as if they feel that, yes, there is going to be impending doom. After you have asked this, another question to ask the individuals is what relieves their pain? Rest and sublingual nitrates are again characteristic of an anginal pain, whereas when a patient says that it gets relieved by sitting up and bending forward, then this reflects more in, in cases of pericarditis due to the inflammation which is reduced and the friction which is reduced in cases of pericarditis that is seen. So there are some quick predisposing factors which need to be elicited very quickly for angina. These could be obesity, presence of xanthalasmas, the age of the individual, more than 55 or 60 years of age, the sex, which is male sex, occupation of the individual, sedentary occupation is more of a predisposition, diabetes, hypertension, family history of coronary artery disease, history of smoking, and history of dyslipidemia. So these are very quick 10 predisposing features that you need to look at and check. You can look at the patient, see if he's obese. Look at him, see if there are xanthalasmas which are present around the eyes in these regions. Check the age of the individual, male or female. What do you do? What's your occupation? Do you have diabetes? Are you having hypertension? Do you take any medicine for that? Is there any history of premature coronary artery disease in your family? That means did anyone develop coronary artery disease less than the age of 55 or 50 in your family? Do you smoke? Do you take alcohol? Do you have dyslipidemia or do you have an abnormal cholesterol? So these 10 features should not take you more than a few seconds or a minute to identify quickly in a rapid fire round. And all these are predisposing for angina pectoris or unstable myocardial ischemia in a patient who's presenting with chest pain. Another set of predisposing factors could be pregnancy hypertension, Marfan syndrome, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. You find a tall, lean, lanky, young male who presents with chest pain, start thinking of a Marfan syndrome, look for Marfan syndrome, and start suspecting an aortic dissection in case the pain is sudden, sharp, stabbing, and is associated with telltale other signs of aortic dissection. A person could give a history of a recent surgery may have had trauma, could have had a long distance travel, may have hypercoagulable state or features, and then you should be alerted or alarmed towards a pulmonary embolism. In this last slide in this section, I'm going to talk about some telltale signs of angina, which you should be able to elicit very quickly while looking at the patient in the emergency department a patient who presents with chest pain, you need to find the age, look, see if he's more than 55, he's male sex, smoker, doing a sedentary job, is obese, diabetic, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, has some xanthalasmas around the eyes, and has a family history of premature coronary artery disease. You should be extremely alert to these 10 points which point towards the state of angina. 
ask about the chest pain in detail. Is it acute in onset? Did it start with stress or exercise? Did it last for more than 30 minutes? Does it get relieved on rest or on giving sublingual nitroglycerin? Is it retrosternal or precordial? Does it radiate to the shoulder, arm or jaw? Is it heavy, dull or constricting in nature? Is it associated with ghabrahat palpitations, anxiety, sweating, diaphoresis? Is there a sense of impending doom? So if you get these features and characters of chest pain, and if you find these predisposing features, please be alerted to angina pectoris, which may be a feature in this. So I leave this slide projected at the end of this session. And with this, we come to an end of the first part of this session on an approach to an individual who's presenting with chest pain. Thank you for listening in. In the next part of this uh, uh, presentation or in the next session, we will talk about the uh, approach or the elements that are involved in consideration that you should make while attending to a patient with chest pain. And we will develop a, a table which will compare the different features of chest pain in different conditions. So thank you for tuning in and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you.